it's all true. We are best buddies. And if we were in person right now, there'd be a high five and a kiss. Happy New Year, Call of Duty fans. We're in for a good one here. Ask at SND Chance. Wise words that are nameless. This is bound to be a spicy series. Hey, he said it, not me. I'm not saying I disagree, but hey, those are his words. But the SD theme will come a lot later. I will set up, by the way, for this series, the maps that we have basically neither team has played any of them right map four map five both mercados neither boston nor minnesota have touched it at all so the later we go in the series the more we get to test the map pools but for our bagger fortress we do actually have a little bit of intel uh, both these teams have played it minnesota they've looked a little bit stronger but strong indeed. Well, we'll see what happens later in the series. Testing out map pulls is the name of the game. Major 2. It only begins today, but we'll be going to Boston in not too short a time. Into the first map we go, though. Over to Fortress, and so far, so good. Boston opening breaks all sweet. Looking to flip chance, and look, they've done it. I mean, as no, good as it gets, at least for the break. Maybe you don't get the full flip, but at least you get in a little bit of time. And the hero is live inside of the hill, but maybe not for too long. But awakening that key player. Three streak right off the rip. He's the man pushed out towards P2, and he's trying to keep the map open. And if he can do so by gun and cami, Boston, if they can get these spawns, that's the turnaround. That's how you want to deal with P1. Sweet start from Awakening 4 0. He had a very unfortunate and slightly tragic turn of events at the opening major in Raleigh, but now looking to redeem themselves. The hosts finding these kills all over the shop. Boston still keeping the kill feed all green for now. The final few seconds going to tick over and Vivid still keeping things going as well. It is non-stop slaying out of Boston Breach. P2 is theirs. That truly is beautiful. So what, an effective tied game going into new, but we talk about that spawn trap all the time on Al Bagra. And well, a lot of the hard work has been done. Now Vivid in the back, him and Methods putting in some work around the hill. It is split spawns all over the place. And well enough, Minnesota actually doing a great job of reading those split spawns. So, hey, they're just gonna bully their way through the front. Rocker, they got some fight in them too. Not an easy thing to do is read spawns in this game, but for now, it's all good. Rocker holding it down. All angles covered. You've got one at the back line. That's going to be Awakening, and here he comes. We're going to get this fight started. The final 30 seconds here still to be contested over two kills. No, they're still holding it. Rocker retain control for now. You've still got the pressure. Finally, Breacher in. 20 seconds. You'll take that. Yeah, pressure on Afro and Cami as well. Afro's going to be rotating in towards his friend, but Cami doesn't win the gunfight, so Boston, they have the opening. They get the ARs posted over towards the hill, and... Uh, that is now two for two on rotation for P2 and P3, where Cammy just not able to get it done, and Boston looking to take full advantage. Here comes the coordinated effort to now break it. So far, brilliant work. Method's the next man up. Three spree, looking for a Vance. Knows he's still up there. Spots a couple of shadows. He can't get it all done himself. Good work there out of Minnesota, Minnesota Rock, and now to break on in. Vivid, he and Nero still keeping the pressure alive. Nero with a two, makes that side of the map still safe. Rocker, so hard fought, but not quite enough to get the break. And a little bit scrappy as well, right? Because it's obviously not the perfect break on towards the hill. Rocker keep at least a little bit mixy and Bance trying to be annoying again, but I'm just seeing a lot of TAC 56s in the feed. I mean, Awakening right now, nine and three. He has been just hanging out right from the opening break and maybe finally a team able to stabilize and get the setup that they want to have. Clean work from Boston early on. Final 20 seconds to go and by the looks of it they're gonna get every last second yeah they get every second but chance it's the way it goes on fortress you're trapped on this side of the map no way to get out without using your guns now fight the forward that's the play now they have to make the way to the left hand side of the mini map and so far that is exactly where rocket lay hard point time will be going there's in just a moment time they sorely need to try to mount the comeback and a big moment as well right because this is the first time they've actually been able to secure a rotation and not get picked apart along the way but the opportunity to set up set up the spawn trap is already gone vivid at least able to make it through and keep in mind vivid is going to be on the five streak so at least thinking about that potential cruise missile but it is all the nades all the attacks just slowing this man down getting no help either his teammates getting picked apart along the way he's trying to find anything all he's found is multiple stunts gonna check this corner and get smoked this will be a horrible end for the spree for vivid once these streaks still minnesota rocket have held on this hard point the whole time they've got themselves right back in this one yes that's afro get him just about nails it. There we go. Streaks had. That's going to be a back pocket cruise missile and the break. A 20 second pitch to be had. Not bad workout breach. And I don't know how he gets that second kill either. That <laughs> man just killed him in a bullet. And I think Vivid's look of surprise equated to my own. But once we go over towards this new hill again, you want that left side pressure. And Minnesota, despite the fact that Cami's actually in the back, have just spawned everywhere on this map. So, I mean, you have effective pitches getting set up left and right for Boston. Not fun to have to deal with, but at least you get the players outside of the hill. And 
Make sure that Rocker won't be collecting this time. Try and... Ooh, that's awkward. Bounce will be dropped. Goes down there for Vivid. Time ticking. We're looking towards that 100 point mark now for Boston Breach. Quite a closely contested fortress hard point here in game number one so far. Breach with a full control. Rocker now winding up for the hit. All easy reads so far as the Boston players. Full control. Not a hope in hell. Rocker still at the door. I did through there, just getting obliterated by the ARs as well. I think the player Dang. called out a watch for for Rocker is Afro. He's like 7 and 13. And if the map is being locked down by TAC 56s, you're not going to have any sort of freedom to start making plays. So, Rocker, they have been on the bad end of a business deal where Boston have just been lights out. But that's all for the reset. Only the first half of the game is underway. Maybe not the widest kill disparity, but obviously Rocker, they got a long way to go, especially when Methods is going on flanks and blocking those spawns. Well, many wise men have said that in this game, all you need to do is chain two hills together and you're basically back in any match. We can see if they're going to get it done now. Back over to P1, we have Sweet Nate there from Vivid takes care of Bant, so no time accumulated for either team now. Bit of a foot race on, trying to get towards that open hard point. No one there for now. Rocker still looking to make the play. Afro, is he the man? Well, unfortunately, you're not awakening with a pistol. Hard point now in the hands of Breach, but for how long? Hey, I also don't know how well Rocker are going to be reading these spawns because a couple of players spawned up in the middle of the map, and at least now it's for the part where Vivid's all the way to the back. That is three down in the feed. We'll see where the spawns come through, at least for the side of Rocker. And there you see right side of the map, they're out. It is a two versus two fight for these P2 spawns. Method is the man trying to hold it down. Oh, he's got so many angles to watch, though. Here comes Attach around the corner. Sweet, no problem. All now eyes on Cami. Last man on this side of the map. Ziddy's got this side locked. No one's getting through there. Awakening now, trying to comb through the back as well. Good comms. Out of breach. The sneaky moves out of Cami. And he able to get now a couple of shots. No problem. Boston, huge bit of work there. Massive recovery. They're in the driver's seat now, for sure. I mean, the absolute menace on these P2 rotations. Awakening gets a triple kill towards the middle of the map as well. And, I mean, Cami, at that point, just gets left alone by himself. So... I'd say for the moment, Awakening is just winning his team this game on the P2. Man, is a menace. What are you going to do on a five spree looking for the next few? I mean, he's trying to get in the bush. He's got patched. You can't quite get in there anymore, but it was nearly no problem at all. Bounce the five spree of his own. Zinni on the back line now. Desperately trying to keep these players off it. Here comes the quick contest. Checking every possible corner. No intel at the moment to work with. Good work, though, out of Boston. Again, not only the teamwork flowing, but the crucial factor, the X factor, awakening. He ain't sick today. It's the right kind of sick. Your boy's cooking. So's Nero. Top rope bands keeps the player alive. Holds it down still for Rocker. And look at that entry two piece, by the way, because Rocker, those two players are going to spawn all the way out and they get killed by the crews again. So Cami and Afro, they've been welcomed to the blender. It is a perfect break, a perfect streak usage and a perfect play, I think, right there for Boston to try to solidify the game. That literally perfect work out of Boston. Breach, ladies and gentlemen. 45 remaining on Fountain. And they're starting to heat things up. Demon Joe, no exorcist here in the lobby, has been able to take care of this monster. Z my feet's gone black that's okay we're having a great time chance 200 points now cross for boston and once again boston is just the full setup on this hill right if it's hard to get out of this spawn trap it's hard to actually break in towards the point so i mean it is the perfect break to make it happen nero and vivid deliver you get set up for this full 60 and i mean i don't know if it's going to be a 100 point glove but it's certainly looking like it's going to be close it's pretty damn pretty damn dominant not over yet though another rotation another hard point rocker time to wake up lads still that first map they're a team that didn't always get things going in the first openers but for now you've certainly got to do a, a real climb to make this one even presentable i would not be handing in this work it does not look finished for minnesota but here come the beginnings of the hold can they keep this time going you see the break opportunity as well, right? Two players through the tunnel. Awakening is all there for the bait, but doesn't really bait out much. Attach ends up ripping off Method's head. So the hold so far so good, but that is a very close spawn that comes in. So Boston Ooh. should be quick on the approach or maybe just should be quick to feed Attach Damn. a couple extra kills as it is headshots. Nothing but head right there for Attach. Whoa, six kills in a row now for Attach. He's got himself streaks as well to work with. Now, does he have the spawn knowledge? Oh, he saw him. Nero goes down again. Seven now for attach. Hard point still in the hands of Rocker. Things are getting going. This is not over yet. Yeah, look who showed up at the feed though, right? As soon as attach gets a little bit hot, awakening there for the response. There. And he just <laughs> takes down three of his own. So, I mean, hey, Minnesota, they played that hill well, but now you have 22 seconds away. The other team winning the game. Cruise missile coming through. I don't know if any trophies on point, but 
if they get out with the dodge and actually do the trophy in the hill, but at least they get cleared out for the moment. Rocker trying to keep things alive. Rocker still though, man. They're not out of this yet. Quick setup here from Boston. Identify the angle of attack. Zinni's he's got two of them. Great work. Now Nero's going to get dangerous here. Whoa, Afro. What a kill that was. Keeps this play going. Hard point now in the hands of Boston. Final 10. Here we go. Rocker's got to get things going. Vivid patience. It pays off. Wait. Afro's still alive. He's done. And the man to get the job done. It had to be awakening. What a map. He's back in action. And so a Boston breach in map one. Yeah, it has to be said. Awakening just taken over. I mean, straight from the jump, you start on the bad side on P1. Awakening goes on the three spree just off the opening, gets over towards P2, guns camming the back, flips those spawns. And already, that's like exactly what you want your like flex AR player to be doing. The next time we go to P2, it is the exact same thing. Once again, from Awakening, picking up three pieces in the middle of the map. I mean, the man was sort of lights out dominant from start to finish. It's good that he's not sick anymore. I think clearly that is a much healthier score line from him. And not just Awakening, Vivid is also the guy going on the sprees to get the cruise missile. And obviously we were watching him down low. It was very patient play. They traded a lot of hill time just for Vivid to actually play to get that cruise missile. And obviously when we see it get used, massive two pieces able to pick up, secures a free rotation over towards what Boston turned into a money hill and obviously resulted in a, a fairly dominant map one win. Man, how scary. Those moments, Chance, we've seen it far too many times in competitive Call of Duty where you're letting that player try to get one more kill, play for those streaks, and they end up wasting time. It amounts to nothing. But great work there out of Boston. That was a sensational Fortress Hardpoint to start the series off here. And one of them be very, very happy with indeed. It was a very unfortunate turn of events, and of course, Major. Awakening getting sick, Beans having to step in last minute. Exciting stuff, didn't quite work out for them there. Looking to right the wrongs of that very tough spot. And I mean, a lot of wrongs left to be righted, I'd say, for both of these teams, right? Because obviously the next game mode we're going into, Search and Destroy. For Boston, their map pool, non-existent in the game mode. They are 4-1 and one on Albagra Fortress SMD, 0-4 oh on every other map. So obviously they had to make that a pretty big focus point coming into the you know second split that we have here in the Call of Duty League. And obviously for Minnesota, they had the number one overall round win percentage in SMD online. On land, number 12. Literally went from the best to the worst. Just a matter of the, the switch over towards land. So maybe in a sense, good news that you're back towards that online play. But just the fact that you've lost five S&Ds in a row, that is going to sit in the back of their minds. And obviously, Rocker already down 0-1. They need that quick bounce back. The bounce back would be ideal, wouldn't it? Well, there we go. Map one finished over to map two. Now we're going to roll Elisilo, search and destroy. And in the words of Nameless, both teams, hey, so let's find out no chance because... I mean, ultimately, what we're looking at here now is as much of a of a you know practice session while playing in these incredibly important points games, qualifying games for seeds. Who's going to come out on top? Who's going to walk away with the most information? Who's going to come away with this going, hey, we're not so bad at Search and Destroy after all? I mean, it's an interesting thing, too. Both of these teams looking to prove that. The fact that it is kind of weird that you could actually, like, you know, you win three series on land, but you don't get a great placing. You only get 20 points. You win three series online. You get the 30 points. So online play is incredibly impactful for both of these teams to get the ball rolling. Uh, when we go into uh, LSCO for map two, by the way, Boston 0-1. They've barely played it. It's not an s &D map that we have seen them prefer. And for Minnesota Rocker, one in three. So they've tried it, but this is one of the maps, especially on land, that they were just suffering on. But they certainly have some rep in, reps in, certainly looking for the bounce back. And obviously Afro completely locked in. I mean, did not have the greatest time at Albagra Fortress for map number one. So he's not going to blink going into map two. Yeah, both he and Bands there locked in true focus. The chest cam there from Zinn. He leans forward just a little when he plays. I had the actual the, the pleasure, I would say, of, uh, of actually getting a tour through some of the, the Boston Breach facility not too, actually a few days ago. Uh, and I must admit, an incredibly impressive location up there in Boston. Uh, the boys obviously looking very, very comfortable in game and they've got such a lovely team taking care of them all tournament long. Let's see what happens here, though, friends. The Nero, Vivid, Methods and Awakening. Big bounce, well, big roll through here in the search and destroy be ideal for them. On the other side of the board, though, I mean, Rocker, Chance, the team that we came into the season with high hopes on paper looked incredibly strong. I mean, how are you feeling about them going so far? 
It's very tricky. I think part of the high hopes is a guy like Cami, when he's on point, is looking like, you know, he's elite, one of the best in the game. But when he suffers a little bit, that's where the team suffers as well. And I think Cami probably was the biggest difference in SMD from online to LAN. I think he went three and 14 in opening duels, like your first blood battle uh, at major one, which three and 14, that's just straight up abysmal. Uh, and he also dropped about a 0.5 in SMD uh, at the event. Obviously, on the flip side, awakening. Not a lot of SD struggles for that man. 1.4 nope. overall. So, Cami definitely has a lot to contend with. All right, let's see. Like, here we go. A fun map for sure. Look out for a lot of these close range plays on the inside of the warehouse and the outside, all along lines of sight. That's where the AR players will be coming to play. For now, though, not a whole lot of play, a lot of quiet. Their that silence is broken. Battle. Right, three and 14, <laughs> by the way, for Cammy. If we're just adding to that pile, now three and 15. He has struggled in the first bloods. We'll see what happens in the next round. But for now, the rest of the teammates, the three remaining members of Rocker, still trying to get on towards that A-bomb site. Vivid's got an iron grip on the middle of the map so far. You can't actually see what's going on in this side, A. Eh? And now he's going to see even less. Backs on up, expecting a little bit of love towards that B-bomb side of the map. And that's where Boston Breach's defensive hold will go for now. But Rocker haven't moved chance. Yeah, well, I think the dead silences are going to start to come through for every player on this map. So maybe Minnesota will try to make use out of that in a moment. But maybe just a little bit of progress left to go. And Vance felt the pressure, wanted to make a play, gets absolutely dropped. And now for a 2v4, Attach has the bomb, but it's two players on site. You're just going to be stuck in this position. What a snap from Afro, not a single bullet land, though. Here comes Zinni. He gets at least one. Out he goes. No probs. There's less than 15 seconds remaining in this one, Attach. You've got to do something quite literally unbelievable. And now impossible. There ain't no way, pal. You might get this. And there's no way you get the round. Solid bit of work out of Attach for the final two kills. But a very, very slow start here in the search. Breach, take the first. And it truly is unique. I honestly think we should probably start taking a look at like round ones in S&D for like offensive, defensive win rates compared to every other round, just because you actually have to wait for the dead silences and the trophies to come through to make certain plays. Because it's not fun to try to make an early approach to like that A bomb site. If you don't have a trophy, they're going to hear you coming and they're going to pour on nades. So you're forced to play for picks. And obviously, Saul, as soon as that first blood comes through for the team on defense, I mean, it felt like it just locked up the round. See if that happens throughout the rest of the year. Likely will. Cami, a lot of criticism from my colleague in the search. That is the tip of Reese's head. Yeah, you saw Vivid. And Cameron McGilligan, one of the most outstanding Cold War players. It's been a little quiet since then, but you know, at any moment, he could pop right off. Great work there from his co-worker, Bance. Keeps things alive. Hey, great job on the intel, just to make sure you feed him. And hey, speaking of intel, Awakening, maybe the next in line. Going to be forced to back down, maybe send Cami in for the kill and... Meanwhile, well, Cammy's thinking about that on Awakening. You see that little dance is happening. It's still four versus two for Rocker. And there we go. Beautiful work. Rocker make it a four versus one. Shoes on the other foot now, and they are kicking all down to Nero. And he's going to get the bomb down. But he is totally and utterly surrounded. Does he have dead silence? Can he make something of us? He does. So, okay. This ain't over yet. Well, I, he made a little bit of noise. That is a lot of players on Minnesota all looking the exact right direction. And the pinch okay. is in. The gunny, though, too. But now you just have to hop the bomb. And, you know, I think unless you get the wall bangs perfectly, the round's going to be secure. Oh, man. I mean, good work there, our rocker. The exact opposite of what we saw happen, you know, with London, where, you know, they nearly managed to lose a very, very... Well, what? Sorry, let me rewind that one. London gave away a round where they had their massive advantage there. Nero couldn't do a scrap. But for now, that is a, a lovely bit of work there at Akami. Stayed alive in that protracted fight against Awakening for what felt like the whole round chance. Yeah, and he got the info for Bance as well, right? So if we're going to criticize Kami for the opening duels, he at least set his teammate up uh, for the first blood as well. So nice little bounce back in the round number two. And obviously, win the first blood, win the round. Both of these teams clean so far on defense. And maybe Rocker wants to mix things up just a little bit. Tatch does have the dead silence to work with, although admittedly, I don't think he's going to be making a play anytime soon. Demon Joe, far side of the map over by B. He's got a lot of the map covered, but most of the action is going to be taking place here on the inside. The bomb site. What a snap there from Benjamin Bance. Afro's in trouble. Here comes the turn. Watching out for these players making moves. And it's Methods with a deadie. He's the one making you know, the outside play. 
and Afro is completely and utterly surrounded for now. Gets that bond down. Attach on the outside, trying to cover him as well. Here we go, 3v3. Yeah, and Attach has to feed the info of, like, if Methods wants to hit this door. And as soon as Attach gets back down, that is just an opening. Afro has to now panic. And in a three, well, now make it two versus two, because Attach is finding the kills. The trade for Methods can't quite get it. And now Boston, they have to try to be aggressive. And in the meantime, they just get picked apart. And Methods, only 20 seconds to work with. Nice little 2v3 clutch it's looking like for Rocker. Here it comes. Afro, easy reads. Great work, staying alive, getting the bomb down. And he manages to catch a big kill out on a Nero there. We saw it on the minimap, who was encroaching closer and closer towards that bomb site. It's one thing to find the kills, it's another to be able to get the defuse. So good stuff there at Boston on the retake. But magnificent plays out of Afro. Three and one, perfect bounce back after that hard point. Yeah, and we were just watching like the little skirmish on like the outer ends of things and you see Attach as soon as he just has to call out, hey man, those doors are open, somebody could come through, that's where Methods is, but Attach instant on the reposition, finds an extra pick and I mean, obviously the teammates putting in work inside the actual site. First round on offense there for Minnesota, nice and secure, Boston's turn to attack. No one going towards the extremities of the map, we're all going towards the inside of this warehouse. Afro on the outside, still chilling. Open the gunshots ringing out. No one's going to be moving too much. We are just waiting now for someone to make that mistake. Bomb planting now for Boston. Here we go. I think what attached maybe the most aggressive player on the map right now for Minnesota. Afro, you do have to be careful walking up that lane. You can see, uh, you know, your nameplate through walls. So delicate moment for both these teams, but Attach is creeping up the map and Afro is doing the exact same. Yeah, Cammy, not exactly creeping. He's going for a bit of a sprint. So he's got this door covered. As soon as Attach pops it, he might be in trouble. Window check as well. Here we go. Zin. Oh, no. Baited out by the noise and too many players to deal with. Awakening, can he get anything out of this? In from behind, catches one. The Awakening Vivid, they're in the kill feed. It's all going good. 3v2. Less than 10 now on the clock. Gotta get going, lads. Anyone there to stop it? No, Vivid. Beautiful work out of Boston. Sensational round. Yeah, it's just not enough time, if I'm being honest. That's not an easy one to set up. And you see, quite literally, for the first kill of the round, Minnesota had the timing absolutely perfect. I mean, kicking open the door and jumping through the window at the exact same time. So the coordination, wonderful. And then there's 20 seconds left on the clock, and everyone else on Boston is still alive, and they know the bomb site's clear. So uh, I think they're just sort of hoping that the round collapses in their favor. The idea was certainly there, but Breach able to just execute, and hold that bomb site, and... I mean, hey, for every single call, there is a response. Tied up 2-2 so far. Hey, man, never, ever doubt the power of the 3-2-1 go. Whole load of stuff being thrown their way. Very, very aggressive on the defense here. Boston Breach. Attach got spied. Will there be much more movement out of the rest of the members of Rocker, though, for now? I think they're going to stick to the game plan, and they're going to keep going forward. Methods wins the fight on the outside. Oh, Demon Yosef gets himself another. Oh, come on! He's disgusting. Two for Methods, two from Awakening, another round, Boston Breach. And you're not wrong. Awakening is disgusting. I think in this lobby, I trust him more than everyone else just to straight up win his ones. Posted in the window, even for the second kill, and not a fun one right there for Rocker to have to deal with. Boston, I mean, that is quite literally as easy as it's going to get. And aggressive as well. I mean, Vivid straight through the bottom middle of the map. Attach gets spotted towards the back, and I think Attach probably just feeling a little overwhelmed because it's not just the aggression down low. Methods was just jumping on him on the outside of the map as well. So Breach right there in that round, certainly playing with confidence. This is a force spree now for Awakening as well. So putting that hard work right into the game. Afro encroaching far. Oh, hello. <laughs> that is a lovely bit of work there from Rocker. It's a trade though. So we're still sitting at 3v3, but Attach brought the big gun out. He's seen Vivid as oh. well. Wait a, a minute, shot, though, I guess. Yeah, he must have bomb going down over towards B, though. Big different look now. And Bance, oh, sneaky Bance. He's right into this one. Two members now left for Boston Breach. Make it one. And your boy, Dylan Price. The boomstick out and about. Nero, last man. Hold your breath. Count to three. Minnesota Rocker, they'll get this done quick. And they're just clearing everything out. They have cleared out the garage. Yeah, yeah they know exactly what corner <laughs> he is in. The hunter, the killer, and they get attached the kill as well. So that's a three spree for him. That is the perfect time to pull out the sniper and talk about having the intel. I mean, the stun open on the door, pre-aiming exactly where Awakening is going to be. 
That is an A-plus on the homework. And, hey, if we're trusting Awakening, the win is ones. Can't react any quicker than that. Attach out here. Lighten things up with the sniper. Powerful adaptation there from Rocker. Experienced players. You learn everyone's tendencies, and you can flip those scripts whenever you want it. And that was what you needed for Rocker. Now Boston have got to think a whole lot more about how they want the rest of this search and destroy to go. Three spree from attach. He has the combat knife out, so I think he switched back to the attack. Not going to snipe with that, but I don't know. I hit shots like that. I might think about using it some more, but they have a different idea, and they're also sort of getting picked apart. Vivid up top is causing problems. It's the high ground for Boston as you are dolphin diving your way to attempted victory, but yeah, Methods gets caught, and all of a sudden, it's big wake in the one versus two. Aggression towards that outside A lane. I think Big Wake, I mean, there's a lot of confusion. His dead silence is about to run out. So after this, <laughs> you got to be very quiet. Awakening didn't expect the, uh, what, the open doors play. Everyone enjoying the great outdoors, that clean air on the outside of Elisilo. And now the big old rap, dead silence as well. Awakening though, Spidey senses be tingling. He thinks something's up here, but the boys are going around the outside. They're going to be able to get this bomb down, no problem. And the pair of them there, I think he got hurt. Oh no, he's been spotted. Oh no, Demon Joe, I don't believe it. It's a 1v1. It's a good read, too. I don't know if he can actually trap him in, though. You know he's going to be somewhere around the garage, but in theory, Afro could run all the way back. Waiting with the AR, he's just going to take his time. This is a battle of pure patience right now. An awakening. Oh, my God. I think he saw it. Stun check will land. It's going to land. Oh, no, it doesn't. What is happening? Patience. And what a performance out of Big Wake. He's checking everything imaginable. Afro's going to wide peek. It sees him. Here comes the fight. 15 seconds. And that is Demon Joe. God, he's hard to kill. No! What a menace! What a monster! Patience. Pays off for Boston Breach. And that is a stunning round out of Awakening. Ah, I mean, also for Afro, maybe too big of an ABBA fan, was trying to be the dancing queen. He is one shot. I mean, credit to Awakening makes the perfect play, but I think Afro, who is doing such a good job of throwing shoulders, being delicate, I mean, he just kind of throws it away. I mean, maybe he's worried about the dead silence from Awakening, but I mean, Afro would have been able to hear Awakening coming if he had sprinted for a moment. So Awakening right there, steals it away, clutches the 1v2, no daddy needed. Wow. And talk about a swing round right now, Boston, back with maybe a little bit of confidence. Amazing, I think though, that little kill, Cami getting caught on the back by that big old truck. Just trying to check those angles, doing exactly what Awakening did a moment ago. How different it could have been. Still, a one round advantage now for Boston Breach. We go back onto the inside here on the defense for Minnesota Rocker, not letting anyone get in towards A. You know, that tower covered up towards the bottom side of the map. Oh, wow. it's vivid though, with that first blood, and Cameron McGilligan once again on the receiving end of a big hit. Yeah, I'm not kidding. When I saw that stat, it actually was very surprising because originally when Minnesota was performing well in search, Cami just wasn't a part of a lot of first blood engagements at all. But even where Cami falls, Attach eventually makes up for it for the three versus three. Plenty of time to work with. And uh, Nero absolutely spotted Attach there. All of those Boston arrows turn. Here we go. Agent 47 goes in. Perfect work. Contract complete. Dead Silence gets reset, so he's got a little bit more time to run over. He's sneaky. The snap. Afro wants this fight, though. He's going to try to hold it. He's got to get going, son. Will he catch the timing out on this player? He might not. There's no, maybe. No. Matt Point, Boston Breach. Just great work on the intel as well. I, De Niro might have some of the fastest reaction time in the league, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Like, his POV sometimes just looks ridiculous when you think he's, like, sprinting into death and just reacts perfectly and gets away with it. But I mean, hey, Awakening delivers you the big round. You clutch up in the next one in 5v3. I mean, a little bit more comfortable than it certainly could have been. Boston one round away from going up 2-0 in the series. I mean, I'll be in his Twitch chat in a minute. Just be like, you know, exclamation mark settings. Find out what's going on there. Crazy stuff. The man we've been screaming about basically all series long so far. The man you screen here. So snakening. Yeah, oh, snakening. Damn it, you beat me to it. Attached though. Ain't afraid of snakes. Goes for the shot, not gonna land. 
th over a minute now to play with for both teams and rocker are inside warehouse but they're looking for those kills before they get the bomb down oh, oh my god the play is in. Yeah. Yeah, he got it man he got it ass matt load up the control oh it's finished load it up attach is gonna have to bring the snipe in and wokey dokey it's nothing but head there's no way this happens though there's no way I, if there's anyone that's going to do it, most clutch player of all time. <laughs> but there's no way, right? He's got one. He's got 40 seconds to go. And he's about to get dead silence too. And attach. Look. He's making plenty of noise. Play his cards right. A little bit of guesswork, a little bit of magic. And now he's got a, he's got attack. Time ticking. Boston haven't moved. No one has checked anything. There's no hope. Surely not. There it is. It's done. Boston Breach. Get the job done there in Search and Destroy. And after a dominant performance in the hard point, baby, they are up two to nothing here in the series. And at the professional level, you make a mistake. It gives it like an inch to the other team. They're going to take a mile. Awakening clutches the 1v2. You give away one big round, and it is just the collapse after the fact. Awakening the big plays in Search and Destroy, the big plays in the hard point as well. The man healed up in the break that we had. And <laughs> I mean, hey, he's just back to normal. Eight kills for him. Vivid, the exact same thing. We talk about all the credit we're giving Awakening. Vivid was keeping up in map one as well. Had nine kills as well for uh, the next go around. And that's on top of the three first bloods that he had. But that is definitely a game where Boston got picked apart in the first blood category. Didn't make a difference. Nice six, three win. Yeah, glorious work there out of Boston Breach. Two to nothing. That's far in the series. We're going over to hotel control now for map number three. But a hey, chance. Smooth sailing for Boston so far. I think the most intel we had coming into this series was that the scrims are going very, very well. And well, look, they're putting that practice to perfect execution so far in these matches. All good so far for Boston Breach. Got to be very happy if you are a fan indeed. Though, for those who aren't fans, now we're going to take a quick break. You can go now, grab yourself a beverage, and maybe fan yourself off after these spicy matches. When we come back, it's time to get into Game 3, Hotel Control.
with the Scuff, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. The Call of Duty League is presented by the GMC Hummer EV Pickup, the world's first all-electric super truck. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into this one. It's time to get into map number three of the hotel we go. We're all checked in. The bags are out of the car, and they're now with a bellhop, and they're making their way to the one and only room we've seen on this hotel. And yeah, let me tell you, it's an important room at that, especially in this upcoming mode, Control. Chance. Boston Breach running this one so far, mate. And you bring up bellhops, and I don't know if I've ever seen one. I feel like bellhops might be a thing of the past, much like Minnesota Rockers S and D game. Oh, not not very nice at all. But map pools has been a very big theme for me between these two teams. Obviously, Mercado for map four and map five. Neither Minnesota nor Boston have played a single Mercado all year. We talk about map pool on the side of the search and destroy for Boston hotel. They've only played once. Everything outside of Outbagger, they haven't been great on. They delivered. And now we talk about the map pool for Boston, one and three on hotel control. Another map that they need to talk over, that they need to make those improvements on. And for Minnesota, it's their first time playing it. So both teams trying to expand, both teams trying to improve. And obviously, Rocker, just a fresh look. Afro, while he's been respectably solid on control so far this season, never seen him on this map just yet. Let's find out, ladies and gents. Boston Rocker now going up against the hotel into the first we go. It looks like a heavier stack for the lads of Boston Breach. They make their way over towards B. They can go back and forth as much as they like. Afro at the bar serves up a couple. Meth is now straight back into it. you got numbers over by the B side of the map. Can you get onto the zone? No. Nope. And you're dead. I called that one out in advance. I wasn't even prepared for that. You're just the, the you mind reader out here, but <laughs> hey, you're not wrong. If you can see the future, then you know exactly what's going to happen. It will be a rotation for Boston over towards A, but it's not like they have any sort of map control. But if you need a couple kills to buy some control, Awakening is the man to get it. Yep. Slaying thus far. We are going to say a fond farewell to the A zone kind of quick. That is a lot of players on it. Two man stack. Awakening's got the back line covered for now. He could probably roll back over towards that one. Again, we are blessed with the knowledge of Codcaster. We know where everyone is at all times and what they're doing, what they search on the internet. But for now, these two snakes are going to slither their way into an additional minute of this game. I got to say, those are nine out of 10 snakes right there for Nero. Method's only like a seven. Like he could be a little bit snappier with a snake, you know? It's definitely good work, but. You see, towards the end, putting in a little bit of extra. So I like the improvement in the gameplay for methods. You always got to adapt. You always got to evolve. <laughs> Shed your skin of your former self. It's a seasonal thing, I think. 22 lives now for Boston Breach, the 24 of Rocker. Demon Joe. Ooh, what a fight that was. Attach comes out on top. Pressure on towards the B zone. We'll go immediately. 126. Stopped. Kills are there. Nero and Vivid. They're finding them in the feed. Oh, and they're fighting death as well. Dude, there's no trophies for anybody. Minnesota is getting hit by nades along the way. They don't have any sort of pressure. So this is a pretty big moment right now for Boston. You see Awakening, not only is he getting the kills, does have a trophy to get out on point whenever his team wants to Damn. make the call. And how do you not make the call now? When Awakening is gunning like that, maybe it's because you're getting spawned out on the other side of the map as Rocker. Yeah, Rocker pressure to mid. A big moment though from Afro. He could hit the flank here and go huge, but he's still going to get in there. He's been heard. He hasn't been stunned. Awakening still got the top end control. We talked about how important it is before we came into this one, and it's still ever important. 15 lives left for Boston. Demon Joseph, the smoothest of moves, the silkiest of hips. Can he stay alive? Here comes Bats. Wide peak. Damn, what a win. That's a massive win as well, because at least that means you now have two players inside a bedroom for Rocker. So they have stabilized. They have the kill advantage as well. Now the question is, how well can you read the flank? Attach is staring at it, ready for the gunfight, takes down the first, and Attach's arrow stays strong. He is ready for the second as well. Oh, man. Attach just straight up locking things down. Rocker making the best of what was originally a bad situation. 20 seconds. He's finally dead. Is this enough space though to get onto the point and stop the clock? You still have to contend with Bans with being up so sneaky. Afro caught out, doesn't get a kill out of this one. We're on the point. 13.4. Pinned it. You've got a two-man stack. This could get ugly. Bans is taking care of players in the back line, but already we're looking at a capture. Two zones gone. Oh, my lordy. It might be done. Go, Bans. You have to dive. You have to get in there and go big. Afro's there to help out. Pressure is on. This could be it. Somebody get the contest. Somebody get the kill. Somebody get in there. Somebody get it. No, it's done. Breach have somehow stole it. What have we just watched? Afro's face says it all. They were scared. They were so scared to actually fly out and get them off the point. They never had enough reinforcements. No more gas in the tank. And they couldn't get it done. I mean, they stabilized. 
they got two players in the bedroom, or at least on that side of the map, and they just get picked apart. Too slow to return on the attack, and Boston, as far as I'm concerned, basically steal that round away. And no surprises at all, by the way. Awakening, 8-2, and two, and Vivid, he is dying more, but that's because he's slaying all the same with all of that objective work. Four objective kills for Vivid, a total to his neck. Opening now from Rocker, getting themselves over towards that B zone as best they can. Plays in mid. <laughs> oh, perfect work by Vivid. Nice bait though. But Meta's going to be the man there to pick up the two. Clean those players up. And attack draw. He was staying alive for as long as he possibly could. Eyes over towards A now. Afro's going to make his way through mid map. Stop the cutoff there from Boston. Don't let them sandwich you in. Or, okay, no, they're in trouble now. Rocker. Rock on a hard place. And they are stuck between it. I mean, there's not just really any options. Awakening is not the player you want to deal with. And even if it's not him, it's Nero waiting in the wing. Can someone get out of their spawn, please? Now, Method starting off on a five spree on this round. 27 to 21 in lives. I mean, have they even touched a single zone for more than a second? Finally, a four-man swarm on the hill. So it go. is going to fall, but at least takes down one with them. And Nero showing up as well. But... Boston finally getting picked apart. Fans finally making the play and a little bit of clearance on this A zone. But obviously, that's just the start. You still got a long way to go in this round. Still plenty of time if you get to this point. Boston on the outside of it. Here comes the slow hit. Atachi's not going to be able to read all these players. Afro's going to cover him here. This is going to get dicey real quick. Let's go for a quick Minnesota rocket listening. Nice, nice. One's going to pinch. Nice, nice, nice. That's him. We won? Yeah, he could, he could be our second. Hey, get my shot, get my shot, get my shot. connector. Okay, yeah. I'm coming out, I'm coming out, yeah. Watch out, DB. I'm, I'm watching shop, I'm watching shop. Yep. One's blind, one, 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 one. Zinni's not good at that. I'm watching, I'm watching. Hello, that's 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 that side. That's 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 right, there we go. I'm watching. I'll be chill, I'll be chill. Just kill me that side now. There's side, there's side, there's side. Move on that side. I'm on shot. Three dead, three dead. Crap, big, 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 crap, I'm going back steps. Back steps, back steps. Nice, I'm one shot. He's going to be watch out. Yeah, I'm getting him. Oh, shit. Oh, no, P2. P2 side. Left side. Left side, left side, left side. Nice. We can be spawn. We can top spawn. Yeah, I'm getting mine checking again. Let's see spawn. Are you in the top left? Let's spawn now. Good pitch. That's big. This one broken. He's going to be low, but he's going to be low. Then I should block it. Wait, one more. Yeah, one more. I heard him. Low, 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 low. 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 Low, low, Okay, I'm gonna play spawners. I'll get him in, I'll get him in. Yeah, they should be mid. mid. Watch out, Lolong. He's just holding. He's behind us. He's mid. 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 He's we're gonna be able to stop the clock. Not nope, Nero's done. It's finished. It should be the round unless Afro can do something crazy. He's trying to get in there. He's got the kills. Numbers from Boston. They're over the top. Stranglehold now in effect. Rocker. That should be the second round down. And Boston Breach. They put themselves now. Match point. I just a, a tough one purely in the slang category. I mean, it takes like a three piece from Afro where he fries on the zone just to capture one of them. And outside of that, there was virtually no life. I mean, Boston just having an absolute field day in the kills column. And I don't know. I mean, I like the communication for Minnesota Rockers. Like the comms are pretty solid. The listening skills, a little bit trickier. I mean, it's that one guy that was bottom long haul. I think it was methods that ends up staying alive as the last man and really just picking Minnesota apart and never able to get a full setup. And I mean, little things like that go a long way, but it is three players right now negative for Minnesota. And that's just because, I mean, it's not even awake anymore. It's vivid. He's got 17. He's been able to do whatever he wants. Here we go. Final round potentially here in the series. Let's see how Boston Breach sound with a listen in. I got your red. I got your red. One is one guy. shop. Yeah. Spot, spot right now. I'm watching red. Oh, he's already in shop. Already in shop, Cam. Couch is dead. Spot dead. Give me shop. Give me shop. Yelling for Bance. This first guy killed. Couch is one shot. Let's go to A. Let's go to A. Let's go to A. I mean, B. Dub, 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 dub. Let's go. Let's go. No more double me. Play left. Play left. Spot dead. I'm watching. Big red. Big red. I'm staying dead. I need spot. I need spot. I need spot. All these guys are swinging small. All these guys are swinging small. I'm looking at big guard. I'm in. I'm in. I'm just sitting shop. Play left. Watch my right desk. Right deep right desk. Deep right desk. Nice. All these guys are swinging small. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Where? I need, I need right I have two, both of them, both of them. Oh, no, no, no. 
I'm sorting I'm sorting one. I'm gonna run out of me. Just stick in the queue, stick in the queue. I got a couple of chests. Nice. Deep right, deep right, deep right, deep right. One's left, one's right deal. I'm gonna go big door. Bottom bed, bottom bed deal. No, one step, one step. Big door down. Just get it. I follow me, I follow me. You guys can go big. Yeah. I have a cruise here. Just get it, get it, get it. Yeah, go ahead. Attach is in our like long area. Yeah. go double. Bottom long, bottom long, bottom long deal. He's our bottom plat, our bottom plat. Yeah. Our bottom plat van right now. I cap this and we have a streak. I got your red. I got I got their side red. It wasn't top I think. Play for Dill back here, bro. Yeah, you're, you're you're lying down long, you're lying down long. <laughs> long ran back. Dub, Dub, one shot. I got our van, our van, our van, our van, one shot, one long. Dub, Dub, find me. Dub was one shot, Dub was one shot. Ran back long, ran back long. Dub again. That was my sis. I'm gonna go check. Yo, I need to hit you. What's here? Yeah, copy, 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 one shot. Attach it down spawn, attach it down spawn. I'm still one shot. I can't run spawn. I'm gonna streak. I can streak whatever, you let me know. Once you got this, once you got this, okay? Yeah, I crossed. The final segment, 1 minute and 35 seconds on the clock, and Minnesota Rocker have got to do it all. And maybe that's the start that you want to have again, two players inside a bedroom, but they have been in this situation before, and they have let it slip, oh, no. so this is their one moment, and they got to make sure they shut Nero down on the flank as well, at least in the back, as this man is on a five spree in the meantime, so a lot of good things happening. If you want to add to the category, one tick they need to capture, you got a man on a five spree, and obviously you're up on six lives as well. A lot of ways you can win this. Oh my god, the damage. No way, Nero! Unbelievable yeah. win. That could be it. That's game. What a fight! That was Boston Breach GG's in the chat. It's a 3 0. A one explosive finish. A a a an absurd level of precision. As Rocker have just been turned inside out on control. I mean, turned inside out in this series. They basically offered them nothing. I mean, it was back and forth in the search and destroy for the first six or seven rounds, but other than those. Boston just kind of did whatever they wanted. I mean, the slaying was through and through. Nero did not have to pop off in this series at all. He was just able to play comfortably the entire time. I mean, I think Vivid and Awakening as like a slaying duo in this series were right neck and neck with each other the entire time. But I mean, 17 non-traded for the pair of them. 9 and 20 right there from Cami. Afro certainly suffered in the map one in the slaying category. And I mean, you know, dropping a two versus one to Awakening and the S&D is going to be a stinger. They just, it was a bit of a flat series for Minnesota. That was a very long break that these two teams just had. And I think maybe Awakening getting healthy might have been the, uh, the biggest factor in the game. Absolutely disgusting series out of Boston Breach. Safe to say the practice is paying off and they're going into their own major, starting things off on the right foot. Wow, Minnesota Rocker, plenty to be uh, plenty to be improved upon there, let's face it. But a chance, wow, did not expect this to go so comfortably 3-0. How are the Pickums looking, chat? In fact, how are the Pickums looking, desk? I don't want to talk about it, Miles. Neither does Nameless, <laughs> but Allie wants to talk about it. Allie, you called Boston coming into this one. You didn't call the 3 0, but what gave you confidence in this team? Why did you know they were going to walk away with the W? I mean, to be honest, it was a lot of benefit of the doubt, right? These are two very good teams, and this is a Boston Breach who, and the opening, I mean, we forget the opening week, they had that huge win against Atlanta phase and set that expectation really high. It dropped off there from the qual qualifiers after they went 2-0, and then obviously on land, Awakening gets sick, right? And this is a team who has the talent across the board, and the stats are there for them, too. Heading into that, I was like, they're first and hold. Their rotation just needs a little bit of cleanup. What did we see in that fortress? They were the first ones there on P2. They were heading into early fountain control, and it was Awakening who had a statistically beautiful series right off the bat, so obviously he's feeling better. I think we might see a new Boston breach this split. Are you worried about Boston anymore? Because we definitely were after Raleigh, and they're looking like the team that came out swinging in the open week of major number one but remember they went 2-0 in that opening week and then went 0-2. Yeah, they started, I mean, a little bit of an inconsistency that we saw there, but there was a meta shift. We saw the M4 get taken out, yeah. uh, and then they had to adjust, and they go up into land and Awakening gets sick, so I feel like it's very hard to, like, gauge where Boston is amongst the rest of these teams, but this is a very good match to sort of, like, figure out how you think this team is going to perform. Across the board, there are all three game modes. They look ridiculous. Like, in that control, yeah. that was masterful. That last round, great indicator of this team's chemistry. I'm just told that we have our interview ready. Let's bring them on to the show. Gig Awake is in full force today for Boston and he joins us live. Welcome back to the show, Awakening. I wanted to start though by talking to you about what went down in Raleigh. You guys weren't really on the main stage. It was kind of a secondary story versus all the other chaos in Raleigh. What happened to you? What happened to the team? And what's going on now? Uh, basically, for the first match, I literally like I was dizzy, nauseous, and like I went back to the hotel. I was thrown up. So like 
I mean, it's just super unfortunate that we lost first match and then they had to play with Beans uh, versus Vegas, but I mean, like, we're just shocking that up to like, I mean, it's just unfortunate. So we're just moving on and we're screaming again. We're confident and yeah, we're moving past it. Yeah, for sure. And congratulations. I mean, we all obviously were hoping for your recovery and a full one at that after this series. And I need to ask you, what is going on with the Boston Breach for the fact that you guys can have series like this that you just dominate and shut out these teams? Then I feel like we watch you guys again. Maybe it's not the same story. Is it something? Are scrims just not translating? What is with the consistency with the Boston Breach? Um, I'm not too sure about the consistency, but like ever since we did one, like we've been so good in scrims. Like we're just so confident, and I mean, yeah, we're just like. We're just beating everyone in scrims, and if we can translate that over the matches, then we'll be super consistent. Perfect. Uh, wait, listen, I saw your tweet this morning. You said, listen, I got to be a demon in today's matchup. You feel like you got to take over in these games, which you did. That's what the team needs of you. Uh, so congrats on the win. But I want to ask you about, like, your preparation coming into match days. I tweeted out about cold showers the other day. You said it's all <laughs> mental. Does that give you an edge yeah. you know, against the rest of the competition? Because that stuff is hard to do. Um, no, I don't think it gives me an edge, but I truly do believe, like, stuff is, is all mental. Like, if you have a strong mental, then you're just set. Like, it just really is all mental. Uh, you know, speaking of, like, mental, like, for you, is it tough to bounce back after being sick, watching your team go up against those, you know, the Challengers team losing that, and then you get sick, watching them lose that next match and then get bumped out of the tournament? What's it like for you as a spectator watching your squad? Um, I mean, honestly, I didn't, I didn't even watch the match live. Like, I went back to the hotel, I literally threw up, and then I went to sleep. So, like, I watched it back, obviously, but I didn't watch it live, but... It sucks, but at the end of the day, we have just moved past it, and yeah. Oh, good luck. Awakening, I gotta ask you about the major, baby. Boston is hosting it. There's a bowling alley nearby, I'm told. How are we feeling coming into this event? What are your expectations for the fans who are gonna get a chance to see you playing in their hometown? Um, the expectations are really high. Like, if we keep playing how we're playing right now, like, we're gonna be one of the best teams about the major, and. Hopefully we are, because I want to give that to the fans and all the supporters, and yeah, I just want to have a good major. All right, man. Well, make sure you have an extra Sharpie in your back pocket at all times. I think you're going to be one of the fan favorites in the building. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. That is awakening, and we're not done with him yet, because we got your scuff play of the game. This, of course, is Gigawick in the 1v2 search and destroy. Minnesota needs to plant the bomb. He's the last one standing. Walk us through it. And you know what? In this situation, for some reason, I felt like Gigawick was going to pull this through. I was like, 1v2, bomb needs to go down. They're heading over to the beach side, and he isolates that first gunfight. He catches Cami out in the deep side, and now it's a 1v1 versus Afro. And to be honest, Afro didn't really have to child this, but I feel like Awakening was playing this hunter role so well yeah. and trying to sniff him out that it kind of forced Afro to play a little weird. Did you see that evil smile, Ali? No, like seriously though, yeah. in that situation, <laughs> he's laying down in the top window, plays off the sound cue, gets that yeah. first kill, and he knows the player's going to be around bomb because you have to peek in through one of the doors to see that bomb site. So as he's in field, he just hunts him down, finds Afro. Yeah. Afro gives him the kill, man. He just needs to play a little slower. It's crazy that he was able to pull that off. And if you're looking back at this series, that was definitely maybe the round that broke Minnesota's mental. Boston Breach walking away with a 3-0. But for Minnesota, you do have something to look forward to. The young man attached. He's actually kind of old, age of 26, 27. He's still got a sniper, Nameless. Yeah, he's still got a sniper. I mean, uh, you know, picking up some kills, like he's doing his thing. The problem with Minnesota is, like, they have to be a fantastic search and destroy team. Maybe we looked at their map one record, three and six when it comes to hard points on map number one that's just not going to cut it and if you go into that search and destroy where they're now 0 and six in their last six it's not going to work a 33 percent offensive win rate i was looking at their offenses specifically throughout the search and destroy they won i think it was round three and then from then on they lost three straight offenses giving up a 1v2 it has to be better in those moments. They need better communication. And specifically, I want to talk about that map, too, and that LSEO search and destroy. Boston Breach heading into that, like, their search has not been good as well. But on LSEO specifically, they're number one in plant win percentage, and they're second overall in the league with plant win. So when that bomb gets down, Boston Breach is basically guaranteed the round. And I think that was the biggest mistake Minnesota Minnesota Rocker had in this series was allowing Boston Breach to do what they wanted to do, allowing Boston Breach to get into the site and get the bomb down quickly. Even though they're a good retake team, you cannot be giving up that much control that early, especially in the series you're down 0-1, because then suddenly the momentum and nothing is going your way. So Minnesota Rocker, the composure, I feel like just wasn't there for them this week.
Yeah. Austin Breach able to get the job done. Final thought here, Ant, before I plug what's on the shop. I mean, I was just going to say, a lot of people going into that series probably thought Rocker was going to dominate the controls. Their first time playing hotel yeah. control, and they honestly, they didn't look like they knew what they needed to do. Like on that offense that they had, they were trying to pinch around, got killed over and over, didn't get bedroom control and holding it down. It's just so many mistakes on Minnesota's side, but, you know, I think this is a team that can step it up, but it's got to be soon. Control is a good game mode for them. Maybe just not on hotel. You got a new map to practice here between your next series. They're not done this weekend, and neither are we. We still got a match to go. And before we get to that, head on over to the CDL store, CallOfDutyLeague.com. Pick up our extensive collection of official CDL apparel and merchandise, including classic favorites like team jerseys and hoodies. Visit once again shop.CallOfDutyLeague.com if you're on a cell phone and you can't read that line on the bottom of your screen. Thank you all for joining us so far. And remember, keep the party coming. You could be hosting the official watch party for the Boston Major. Major 2 is going to Boston, and you can bring your community with you. Head on over to twitch.tv and join in with hashtag CDL Watch Party. Shout out to my man M Rags, but no one does it better than the flank. They were bouncing around red zone style, and I can't wait to see what they're bringing to us next. When we come back, we got the final showdown of the night. You don't want to miss it. Clayster in Las Vegas, the Legion taking on the Seattle Surge. 